OK, so hello. Uh, uh, všechno se mi říct, ne? <laughs> okay. uh, so, yeah, so, uh, hello. Uh, I would like to speak uh, with uh, Martin Jambor here uh, on uh, optimizing uh, C++ uh, STD vector uh, implementation in GCC. Uh, so, uh, the beginning of the story was actually a week before the last year uh, ZUSA Labs conference. And there was a, a comparison done by Foronix uh, about GCC uh, 13 and Clang 16 at that time. And it was showing some of the benchmarks which was uh, performing significantly better on Clang than on GCC. Uh, and if I have some free time, I usually try to look into these anomalies because, you know, if you see 20% difference between two compilers, then probably the benchmark is wrong, uh, which actually happens, uh, happens very often, you know. There are various configuration scripts which picks different options for different compilers or they run different program. Uh, but in this case, actually, uh, it turned out to be quite interesting. Uh, so the JPEG XL actually had some configure problems like uh, opting for O3 for Clang and O2 for GCC. Uh, uh, but it was still not explaining this uh, significant difference. And I ended up uh, finding the following uh, benchmark, which uh, actually shows the difference. And uh, it's kind of a uh, slightly obstructed thing to do, uh, but it's not so difficult, so I will explain what it does. Uh, so it has a pair, which is only just to make it non-trivial C++ type, but it was actually used by the benchmark. And it has a stack, and it pushes a pair on the stack, and then it pops it from the stack. It checks if the first entry is zero. It's always zero, so it's always true. It increments the second entry. It pushes it back. And after 10,000 increases, it ends. So there's always only one entry on the stack, and it's being pushed and popped back and forth. Uh, so that's very sophisticated uh, uh, simplification of uh, JPEG compression, I guess. And. Uh, uh, actually, the loop there was uh, finding text in the image, so it was walking the boundaries of the text that was having a worklist for that. And if you benchmark it on different compilers, uh, you can see that the GCC uh, 13 at 02 and 03 needs something like half a second to run this benchmark 10,000 times. And, uh, and Clunk is really significantly better, but I also tried a different runtime. So this is GCC with the GCC standard library. And this is GCC with the uh, Clunk standard library, the libc++. And it turns out that GCC with the Clunk's library is much faster than with our library. But on the other hand, the Clunk is faster with GCC library and slower with the Clunk's library. Uh, so it gets slightly confusing. And I think the conclusion is that, uh, you know, even these most advanced uh, compilers in the world uh, are not smart enough to optimize a push operation on, on the stack. Uh, so, uh, what happens here? Uh, you can also see the code size. So the GCC code size, again, you know, it's bigger with the GCC library, smaller with the Clunk's library, and the Clunk's code size is smaller with GCC library, and bigger with Clunk's library. So, you know, if we switch the libraries, maybe we will be both happier. And uh, uh, so why push operation is uh, complicated? So this is the call stack, you know, of the implementation of the push. Uh, there are 93 different calls uh, which, uh, uh, comes from the uh, from the uh, expansion of the macros, and uh, I tried very hard to make this uh, text to be readable, but they are not. Uh, so maybe I will try to zoom. Uh -huh. So this is uh, this is the ralloc insert, which is the key of the problem. That's the function which is increasing the size of the vector when the vector is already full. And it does a lot of interesting stuff, like it is first computing uh, the size. And if the size is bigger than 2 power 62, then it is throwing an exception, which is the error of the length, because your stack cannot be bigger than the address space. And then it calculates the size. And when it's done, it's uh, doing the allocation, which is this uh, part of the program. And it's able to throw different errors, like bad allocation and bad uh, array length, uh, which all are actually testing if the array is bigger than the address space. So they are all equivalent. You know, at the end of the day, only one of them survives. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is uh, how the uh, implementation looks on the beginning. There are 93 different calls. 
And actually, if you try the uh, Clang's library, there are 2030 uh, calls. So we are still doing better. And uh, what GCC does, you know, it has something which we call the early optimization and early inlining. And that's kind of the simplified compiler which is trying to make uh, very obvious decisions uh, to uh, get rid of the initial abstraction penalty. So after the early optimization, uh, my uh, test is actually calling only two functions. It's uh, deallocating the vector and it's doing the pushback. And the pushback is calling the realloc insert. And the realloc insert is doing its job, you know, calculating the size, allocating the memory, and doing the three different exceptions. And the problem is that uh, if you look how this uh, function looks like, so this happens after the uh, light optimization. And the thing is that we don't in inline the realloc insert function, but Clang does. So that's the uh, performance difference, which uh, is the root of the issue. Uh, so I started to look into why uh, we don't inline it. And this is uh, how the implementation looks like. So it's something like 300 bytes, uh, which at O2 level, I think is a little bit too much to inline into every push. And uh, uh, so GCC, uh, after the array optimization, somehow estimates it will be probably around 40 instructions in the definition of GCC instruction size. And the uh, threshold are set in the way that are 15 for O2 and 30 for O3. So if the function is smaller than that, it will be in line. So it's actually pretty far from the O2 inlining. And uh, one thing would be to declare uh, this function to be in line, which would uh, get it in line because the limits are much bigger. Uh, but that would increase the code noticeably because you would make every push to be 300 bytes long. So, uh, I, yeah, this is also what uh, happens in the Clank library. It's actually using, uh, using the inline uh, specifier. Uh, so I decided that I will show you what, uh, what uh, the realloc insert is doing. But again, you know, if I would like to show you the source code, it's actually something like 400 lines of code. Uh, so I decided to show you the GCC representation of it. And again, it's too small, so let's see. Okay, so I try to simplify it and make it slightly more readable. So what happens here is that uh, the vector is represented uh, by a structure, which is having the beginning and, and the position in the vector. And uh, first, it calculates uh, the size of it, which is a division by eight, because the element has eight uh, bytes. And that it is deciding if it is too big. And if it is too big, it goes to this overflow uh, uh, throw error. If it's not too big, it's calculating the new size. And it's very afraid of overflowing the address space. So you know, if your vectors are too big, uh, so it is doing the addition with the overflow check, which is actually done by returning the complex number, uh, where the real number is the addition and the complex, you know, the imaginary part is the flag if it was overflow or not. And then it checks if it overflow. It if overflowed, it's trying to allocate the maximum memory available. But it also checks, you know, if happens that the length is zero, which is sort of stupid. Uh, but it does it anyway. Uh, then it calls. Uh, then it calls the allocation. And after allocation, uh, it is again afraid that maybe the vector is zero size, which is never happening. And after that, uh, it is calculating uh, uh, the address where it should store the new element. And after storing the new element, there is a loop, which is the memcopy loop, which is copying uh, the initial part of the vector to the new location. And uh, after that, uh, there is a other loop which is copying the tail of the vector, which is sort of strange, but it is because the realloc insert is actually able to insert the element into the middle of array, not only at the very end. And GCC actually has the optimization which is turning these uh, memcopy loops into memcopy, uh, but uh, C++ is complicated here, and uh, it is saying that if you have a certain pair, you cannot memcopy it because it has a copy constructor and uh, memcopy would be undefined. So if we don't use it. And we will be able to recognize it later. Uh, but C++ also doesn't promise you that the return value of the new will actually point to the new memory. You know, it might point somewhere into the middle of the allocated block. Uh, so GCC is not sure this will be memcopy and that's why uh, the conversion doesn't happen. And after that, uh, after the copying, you know, the rest is sort of easy. It calculates, uh, 
it calculates uh, the new end and beginning. You know, it is afraid of the vector being of zero length, and uh, then uh, then it's it's done. So that's what happens in those uh, you know, 300 bytes of code. And uh, so uh, I remember that uh, I was looking into this on the last year SUSE Labs conference, and my first uh, impression was that maybe I can simplify this to be shorter. Uh, so uh, I actually managed to get something like 46% reduction on the code size. Uh, by implementing the special Rawlock append, which doesn't have this other mem copy loop, and which is, uh, you know, designed to insert the element at the very end of the of the array, uh, but it's still making uh, making uh, the loop a little bit too large. Uh, so uh, this is kind of the story. Of what happened next? And uh, the, so the first I was working of optimizing optimizing this Rawlock append. Then I found that uh, we are actually using memmove even if we can memcopy, so I was fixing the memcopy. After that, uh, I was looking uh, into this redundant checks for uh, the uh, vector being of zero length. Uh, so GCC actually is able to take the value range hints. So if you defined your value variable and then you make the unreachable uh, on some interval, the GCC will understand that the length has to be greater than zero. Uh, but it was not able to propagate it into the function calls. So I, I added uh, a new feature to uh, propagate this value range across the function calls and return values. And uh, uh, then uh, I was looking why the clunk is actually inlining this function. And it turns out it's a bug in LVM because the LVM is trying to estimate how much the code will be simplified after inlining. And it estimates everything uh, three times. So actually, it gets a negative size of the of the function after inlining. So it's not quite correct. Uh, but I I borrowed some ideas and uh, I make GCC to account it. But GCC was still saying it's too large to inline, which is I think uh, technically correct. And uh, then I noticed that uh, the another problem is that the function is much bigger. At the early stages of compilation, you know, it gets only optimized into reasonable code relatively late. How much time I have? Minutes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I will I will be done very soon, and uh, so uh, that's the complication of C++ that the maximum value is actually calculated as the reference, so it becomes the conditional load of the memory, and GCC was not able to pattern match it uh, soon enough. Uh, so then uh, it turned out that GCC is not able to understand where the hot part of the function is. So I had to fix the profile. And then actually I got the idea that I will employ Richard to fix the remaining problem. But uh, he was looking on it for a while and then he said, no, it's too complicated. You know, Martin has to do it. Uh, so I got the idea that Martin will fix the problem. So I you know he, he made some patches and that's what he will speak about now. I probably don't need it. Yeah, you can hear me well. Good. Um, so basically, yes, I will now try to quickly explain how we can speed up the code even without the inlining that Honza believes um, correctly so that shouldn't happen. Online, the, Honza is the inliner maintainer, so if he says that something shouldn't be inlined, that must be so. Uh, this is again uh, the internal representation of uh, the actual micro benchmark that Honza showed you on one of the very first slides. Um, this one contains each and every uh, statement in, with it, within the loop and in the basic block uh, in the normal non-exception uh, control flow just before the main loop and after the main loop. Um, what we need to um, look at, however, to understand what goes wrong in GCC 13 or what takes the time in GCC 13 and what we manage to speed up in GCC 14. It is enough to look just at the, uh, ju just at the loads and stores into the vector itself. So the, internally, the vector of, uh, is represented by basically three pointers. One pointer, which is called start, which points at the beginning of the allocated 
mm, buffer where the vector is stored, where, where the vector elements are stored. Then we have a pointer which is called finish, which uh, points at the stack top or bottom, depends on, depends on how you look at it, basically you know, where the next element should be added. And then there is uh, something called uh, storage finish, end of storage, uh, right, right over here. And, uh, and um, those three pointers make up the vector. So if we have a look at what happens in the um, micro benchmark in its main loop, we basically see that at the beginning we do a pop, so we change the pointer to the vector bottom. Um, then we decide whether we need to do something, and we always have to do something. Um, so we mm, decide to uh, increment the second pair, uh, or the second element of the pair, and push it. In order to push it, we need to figure out whether we have enough space uh, to push it to the vector, or whether we need to reallocate uh, and, and get more memory. So we load the end of storage, and uh, in reality, um, what happens in the benchmark, there is always um, enough space in the vector, because we're all only pushing and popping one element to the, ve to the vector. And so we proceed to push, therefore we need to store the uh, finish pointer, and as we go down, um, there is a reload of the M start, just in case, just in case it got reallocated. We, you know, if, if it got reallocated, we would need to reload the pointer at the beginning, and uh, the while loop has, um, you know, loops until the vector is empty, therefore we load the finish, to see whether it's equal to start, and only where it is, uh, it would take this way out, but of course, usually this is the break that actually terminates the micro benchmark. Um, and the problem really is that all, you know, the, the, the many stores and loads, you know, we store to finish, then, then, then we load it, uh, we, we reload the M start, we reload the M, M end of storage, and all of this uh, um, slows things down. Uh, and the idea is how can we eliminate these loads or, or try to push them into this slow path, which uh, is always slow. The vectors are being reallocated um, to double its size always, so, so it doesn't happen very often, um, even in real benchmarks. And of course, in a benchmark which never pushes more than one element, it never happens. Um, one idea is to have a look whether this load, for example, could be eliminated as a fully redundant, but because this exit um, bra uh, exit branch, it's you know there is a slight possibility, and it, after 10,000 iterations, it actually happens that this load is not redundant, and so any any implement any optimization based on identifying full redundancy of memory accesses will not move this. Um, the thing that a human would do after looking at this is, of course, just just yeah, just just load everything, load everything at the beginning into some register, and uh, then keep it in the registers in, in the temporaries. And only if if ever happens and we do need to reallocate memory, store everything into the structure, call the uh, function from the standard library, and then reload everything and go on. And in this, this is what GCC 14 actually does. And in the uh, actual loop in the fast path, if you, as you can see over here, we have eliminated or accesses to the memory uh, when it comes to the stack. Um, and uh, that is why we managed to speed the benchmark up without actually including the code of, of realloc append in each and every push, because in this micro benchmark where there's just one push, that's a probably okay, but if you have Firefox, which might have quite a few more pushes, you know, it would probably add up. The pass that does this is called scalar replacement of aggregates. Uh, I'm not going to go into details how it works and how it decides whether and when to do stuff or not, but basically it tries at the core, the basic idea is to look at aggregates, which are structures, arrays, and yes, even unions, and see if we can tear them apart and just put the things into registers, into temporaries of what we call scalar types. So this is one of the simplest examples. If you have a nice for loop 
as simple as they come, but you decide to iterate over a component, a field in a structure, um, and store something into another field of another structure, and the, you know, if many conditions are met, um, what will happen is that internally, GCC will actually tear the structure apart, it might even disappear, and uh, instead there will be uh, variables with internal names containing dollar, z dollar i, z dollar j, and the iterations will happen, for example, in this nice scalar type, so the um, it, it, uh, induction variable optimizations and all sorts of other opt optimizations can just look at, at plain simple integers which they like and which they know how to work. It can happen, however, that you know, the, the, the structure may not just disappear uh, if, for example, it needs to be passed by value to, to a function. And SRA, in this regard, when it figures out, it's still a still good idea probably to do. It can just reload, reconstruct the Z before passing it to Z and, uh, and uh, still, you know, the, the Z would not die but the optimizations can still take advantage of using the scalar variables instead of a blob which you know, gets defined at diff different parts are defi dif defined at different points in the program and it is just much more difficult to reason about. Uh, something very similar can happen when you know, Z would be assigned a result of bar, then you know, the replacements would be refreshed from the Z afterwards, for example, that can happen. But of course, the idea um, behind, well, the problem in the micro benchmark that we are talking in here is that uh, what happens <coughs> is that it is not passed by value, it is passed by reference. And when we do not have any information about what happens in bar, especially if the pointer to Z can be stored somewhere, escape, then subsequently any pointer store um, anywhere until Z dies in, in, uh, over here, over here, in any function call that uh, happens in, you know, in those comments that represent some unknown block of code, uh, can store to Z.I. So then with, without knowing anything, we cannot proceed. Well, however, if we knew that the pointer does not escape, that, that you know, if we are sure that bar does not store the address of that anywhere, we can proceed as, you know, as if we were, as if we were passing it by value and then uh, recovering it, re recovering the components from a return type. So we could do this and GCC 14 actually does query um, whether that escapes. This is the part of the you know, the main part of, of, of the difference. There's also, also, also magic how to, how to behave at different, uh, w w when that is used, but when we look at whether something is even a, even a component instead of this night needs to live in memory, we have you know, basically the, the, the in internal implementation of needs to live in memory, and over here we can have a look at whether the return, uh, sorry, w w whether the address escapes, or whether the value that is passed to the function escaped. And uh, mostly thanks to improvements into IPA modref, which is mostly Honza work, but we would probably need uh, yeah, an, 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 an another talk to explain the basics of that. Uh, we now do know that uh, in the M realloc insert, uh, which are currently M realloc append, even though we do pass a component of the, you know, we, we can delete the whole thing. So, so a component of the, of the vector is, can, uh, uh, can be passed, uh, well, what we load from the vector can be passed to another function that, you know, wh where, where it disappears. Uh, the address of the vector itself does, is not captured anywhere. It does not escape in M realloc insert. And uh, therefore, we can optimize the, um, the memory loads and stores, as I showed you on the you know, nice call graph, and we got to our results, which is where I invite Honza back to, to tell you about the, you know, the measurements for GCC 14 and future work, and then we'll finish in a couple of minutes. So thank you. Uh, so this is, uh, 
what happens uh, with our patches together. So the GCC 14 uh, plus one patch, which will be on the GCC 14.2 as decided today, uh, we can actually produce the code which is uh, faster than the previous compilers and uh, slightly smaller. Uh, so uh, we can beat uh, Clunk in, in all the metrics except for the cosine at O2, but that's on the anomaly because the benchmark is so small. So in the bigger benchmark, uh, the O2 would be smaller than O3. Uh, the thing is that we are not smart enough to optimize out the second push. So inlining uh, the two calls of the push actually improves the code, but because the benchmark is very silly. Uh, so, uh, that's the uh, uh, current situation, uh, but this is not completely solved yet, so there's uh, some work in progress. Like today, I was uh, working on uh, getting the Ralloc append to actually use the memcopy loop, so it's now able to use memmove, but not memcopy, which is sort of strange. And uh, there are other things which needs to be done. And also, I noticed that this is only one of the very many uh, functions in Lips to the C++. So I just uh, got a new student, which is uh, starting uh, in September, and she will make the PhD thesis on optimizing uh, push, I guess. So that's the, uh, that's the general plan. So yeah, it took only one year to get push about half the way optimized to what it should be. Okay, so thank you. Any questions? This is the last talk, so we may have a few minutes more. Unless <laughs> everything has been said, which is. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Thank you.